It is a beautiful question, medium difficulty question. I will classify the question as a GMAT 600 to 650 level data sufficiency question in algebra. The some things that we take for granted when we solve equations, this is basically going to get a good understanding about it and to tell us that we should not take some things for granted. Let us get started with this question. The question is, is y equal to 3? Two statements given. Let us take a look at the statements in a while. Here are the five answer options. You should be familiar with these five answer options as you get started with the GMAT DS. These five answer options do not change as far as GMAT goes. So, essentially, these are etched in stone for the GMAT purposes concerned. So, basically, know it very well. Know when is it an A, when is it a B, when is it an E. All of these should be known to you. Before we set about looking at the statements, let us get clarity at the question stem level. What is the question? The question is, is y equal to 3? What kind of a question is it? It is a question that starts with a B verb, right? It starts with an is, is, are, where, these kinds of questions. So, how will you answer a question that starts with an is or a B verb? The answer to such a question is going to be an yes or the answer is going to be no. Essentially, if someone asked us, is y equal to 3? You are going to say, hey, yes, y is equal to 3. Or you will say, y is not equal to 3. You are going to give an answer as yes or no. The answer is an S when y is equal to 3. That is very evident. The answer is no when y takes any value which is other than 3. Now, let us get one more question in place before we start looking at the statements. When is the data sufficient? So, you know what is a question? What kind of a question is question? What kind of an answer will the question get? That is an S or no. When is it an S? When is it no? We have all of this information. Let us put this into the data sufficiency context. When is the data sufficient? The data is sufficient when you have a definite yes or a definite no. You should be able to say from the information given in the statements, hey, why is the 3 and nothing else? Or you should be able to say, why can be anything other than 3? If you are able to say one of these two with conviction, a definite answer, the data is sufficient. Conversely, say, hey, this information given to me works when y is equal to 3 and it also works, works when y is not equal to 3, then you are not having a conclusive answer. You are saying maybe y could be a 3, y need not be a 3. That is when the data is not sufficient, right? So, you have clarity on all of these points. Let us get started with evaluating statement 1. 1 states y minus 3 times x minus 4 equals 0. Obviously, the temptation is to say I know y is equal to 3. This is a place we are taking some things for granted. I am going to be approaching the statement in two ways. One, I will walk you through the theory and tell you what we should not take for granted. And second one is a very mechanical way of approaching this statement. Right? Look at this. Y minus 3 is let us say a number p and x minus 4 is another number q. What this statement essentially tells us is the product of these two numbers is 0. When will the product of two numbers be 0? p and q will be the product is going to be 0. When either p is 0 and q is not equal to 0, that is one possibility or p is not equal to 0 and q is equal to 0, that is a second possibility. The third possibility is both p and q are zeros. So, now when we said y is equal to 3 and x is equal to 4 are the two answers to this, what we are essentially saying that y could be a 3 or x could be a 4, either of these holds good, this product is going to be equal to 0 is what we are saying. We are not saying that both of these need to hold good. Let me explain it with a counter example. It becomes so much easier to figure it out with a counter example than just talking about theory. I'm going to, when I talk about a counter example, I'm going to provide two examples which will satisfy the information given here. In one scenario, y will be a 3 and in another scenario, y will not be a 3. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to start with example 1. I'm going to go with y is equal to 3 and x is equal to 5. If that be the case, don't think that x can only be a 4. Will this information hold good? If y is equal to 3, let us just plug it in here. 3 minus 3 is y minus 3. x minus 4 is going to be equal to f5 minus 4. Is this product 0? 0 times 1 is 0. So, now y equals 3, x equals 5 is one example which satisfied this equation. Was x a 4 in this not relevant to this question? No, but we would have thought that x is a 4. With x not being a 4, it worked, which means that it will work even when y is not equal to 3. That is what my counter example is going to be. So, this information is holding good for this example. And in this example, is y a 3? Yes. So, the answer to our question, if this had been the case, satisfying statement 1, our answer would have been an S. I am going to look at a counter example. The counter example is going to be y is equal to 4 and x is equal to 4. Will the statement hold good? 4 minus 3 is equal to 1 x minus 4 is a 4 minus 4, that is a 0, the product will still be a 0. The product is 0, if one of these is a 0, it need not be that both should be zeros. If this happened to be the example which was making the statement true, 
is the value of y a 3? The answer is a no. So, if y minus 3 times x minus 4 is equal to a 0, should y be a 3? Need not be. Can y be a 3? Can be. So, essentially are we giving a conclusive answer about whether y is a 3? Y could be a 3? Answer is yes. Y need not be a 3? Answer is no. We do not have a definite answer. So, statement 1 alone is not sufficient. Let us rule out answer options A and D. The most important thing I want to drive home with this question is do not imagine or do not take it for granted that if y, for example, it will hold good anywhere. x minus 3 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. It means that one of these two, if it holds good, the product is going to be a 0. If x is equal to 3, the product is 0. x is equal to 2, the product is 0. Is x equal to a 3? Need not be. x could have just been a 2 and still the answer would have worked. So that is why we say when we solve this equation, what values can x take? Can be a 3 or a 2. So, both possibilities exist is what we are saying, right. So, similarly here, y could be a 3 or x could be a 4. In either of these cases, this should have worked, the product being a 0. So, is y a 3? We are not sure is what we are saying. So, statement 1 alone is not sufficient. That leaves us with 3 possibilities. Evaluate statement 2, that is sufficient, we will go with b. If that is not sufficient, let us combine the statements and determine whether it is c or e. Take a look at statement 2. It is a very easy statement to eliminate. We want information about y, it gives us information about x, so it is absolutely irrelevant to this context. So, let us rule out answer option b. What is left is combining the statements and determining whether it is c or e. Combine the statements. From statement 1, we know y minus 3 times x minus 4 equals 0. From statement 2, we know x minus 4 equals 0, translating to the fact that x is equal to 4. We will have to pick such examples which will make both these statements hold good and be able to determine whether y is a 3. I am going to take the counter example root, right. I am going to start with example 1. Example 1, x should be a 4 to make statement 2 holding good. So, I am going to go with x is equal to 4. I am not even, I do not even have to think about another value for x. I am going to go with y is equal to 5. Will statement 1 hold good with this? 5 minus 3 times 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, this is a 0. 5 minus 3 is a 2, 2 times 0 is a 0. So, y equals 5, x equals 4, this satisfies statement 2, this stat satisfies statement 1. So, y equals 5, x equals 4 is an example which satisfies both the statement, both the statements and the answer to our question is a no. Is y equal to 3? Y is not equal to 3. Example 2, I am going to go with y is equal to 3. x is a 4, that is given from statement 2, we cannot do anything. So, statement 2 holds good here. Will statement 1 hold good now? 3 minus 3 times 4 minus 4 is 0 times 0, which is equal to 0. So, statement 1 holds good for this example as well. If this example was the reason that statement 1 and 2 are holding good, is y equal to 3? The answer is an yes. So, despite comparing the two statements, we still have an yes and a no, which means we do not have a conclusive answer. Statements together are not sufficient. Choice E is the answer to this question, right. So, Basically, the crux of solving this question is to understand that the product of two numbers is 0 and at least one number is 0. It need not be necessary that both the numbers will have to be 0. Statements together are not sufficient. Choice E is the answer to this question.